Don, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we have Don, Donovan Ruffin with Equity Cash Offer all the way in from Texas. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And yeah. he's here to share how they're wholesaling 30 to 40 properties per month, which is a massive number, kind of hard to wrap your head around. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm Steve Tring, broker and owner of Stunning Homes Realty, founder of the OfferFast Homes app, the only app you'll need for wholesaling, and I'm on a mission to create 100 millionaires. So if that's something you want to do, let's definitely connect on Instagram. If you're excited for today's show, please give me a wave, give me a thumbs up. And as a friendly reminder, I don't charge a dime for this show. I don't make any money doing this. So here's all I ask. This is what it costs for you to listen to this show. If you get value today, please tell a friend. You can share this episode right now, tag a friend below, or tell me about takeaway take from the show later on. That way we can all grow together. And uh, don't forget, I am going to be speaking at Weave Live 19 in Dallas in March, so I'd love to meet you all there. Uh, please put my name down when you register so I can give you some uh, one-on-one uh, coaching time. And this is a live show, so if you've got questions, Donovan's promised me he's happy to answer them all of them for you. Yep. So you ready to go? Let's do it. Yeah, hammer them out. Okay. So first question, what got you into real estate? Oh, wow. So um, funny story. So I was actually in sales at the time, and um, one of my buddies sends me a $18,000 check. And you know, I l- look at this picture on my phone, and I'm like, I know you. I went to high school with you. If you can somehow <laughs> come across $18,000 and someone's yeah. willing to pay you that, then I can too. So I guess that's how I found my way into uh, the wholesaling business and real estate. Yeah. Um, that was back in like late 2014, early 2015. So it's been a been a few years. So, but it's not that long ago. No, well, yeah. Right? Yeah. For the numbers you guys are putting up together right now. So, right. like, this is like Instagram. This is like he's just showing it to you. No, he just texted a picture to me. And I'm like, I mean, it, it was like a talk of like our, our group at the mm-hmm. time. It's like, hey, we're going to get into real estate. That's like our next step because we try to like develop a little mastermind to keep each other accountable. Well, that's cool. Um, and he was one that like stepped forward and made something happen of it. So, I awesome. appreciate him. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, tell us about your first wholesale deal. Yeah, so my first deal um, came from Bandit Sign. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty pretty standard, typical of like first first type of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, just laying them out on Friday nights, and then get a call in, in Garland, Texas, and go to a house and lock it up and sell it. And I made like four thousand dollars and put that all back into marketing and yeah, just kind of Garland's what part of Texas? Uh, it's like DFW. DFW. Yeah, okay, it's like so. a little outskirts. Where I'll be next yeah. month. Okay, so <laughs> you're going to you're going to Dallas next week. Uh, next month. Okay. Yeah. So, cool. um, you're 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 putting out bandit signs, mm-hmm. and that's how your buddy got his first deal. Uh, yeah, actually, I believe that's how you got his first deal as okay. well. Yeah. So you start off, you you put a bandit sign, you get a call. Mm-hmm. How's that call go? Yeah. So it's like, hey, I see your sign. You guys buy houses. I mean, you get all types of calls with bandit signs. I still right. put bandit signs out. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I buy houses, and it's like just sticking to like. A traditional like script it's like right. okay just lock it up and then figure it out after it's under contract and so you go meet the homeowner yep run mm-hmm. the appointment yeah any idea what you're doing at that time no idea no idea um okay. pulling zillow values like this is what zillow says it's worth and um just running like a 70 percent rule just standard typical numbers mm-hmm. so all right so you lock it up mm-hmm how are you moving it yeah so uh um facebook actually there's tons of facebook groups out there mm-hmm. so posted a deal it's like hey i have this property once again no idea what i'm doing so um send it out on facebook and had i mean at that time um i mean properties would sell like within a matter of minutes mm-hmm. um so it's it's crazy because yeah it's like i ended up having like 20 people come look at the property and yeah. now that i realize that i got it like an extremely discounted price um and well, somebody right. got a good deal yeah you know so um well, that's yeah that's what happened we don't maximize our first deal. Yeah, for sure. Right? Our first yeah. deal, we're like, man, we just hope this thing closes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so, so four thousand bucks at the time was like, man, this is more than I make in like two, three weeks. So it was what great. were you doing at the time? Uh, so I was in sales. So I was uh, all commission, door to door sales, actually selling mm-hmm. uh, cable. Uh, so that's kind of um, that helps. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's some really relevant experience. <laughs> yeah, um, so I was actually in, in uh, that business since I was like eighteen up until just recently this past year. Okay. Um, so it's yeah, it's like uh, sales is, is kind of my forte. Um, yeah. So it made it pretty easy when I got into real estate. Very cool. And I like the part where you're like, you know, I got this deal, and I'll just post. On, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'll just post on Facebook because yep. there are so many people that are like, I got to build my buyers list. I got to mm-hmm. get this right. I got to get this many people on my buyers list. Yep such a backwards way of thinking yeah you know like if you got a deal it's gonna sell yeah 
for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like the the fire and then aim method. Right. Exactly. Um, I mean, I still operate like that. It's like I don't like even when I go like shopping. It's like I don't know what <laughs> outfits I'm gonna put together. I'm just gonna buy what I need and then yeah. just put it together. You know. So awesome. So what were then some of your early struggles? Uh, I guess some of the early struggles is you know I mean standard typical like finding a deal. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going like maybe I get one lead per month. Yeah. Um, and just laying bandit signs every every single Friday, and it was it was a, it was a grind, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like when a lead came in, you really valued that lead because it's like, man, I worked my ass off for a whole month mm -hmm. every Friday night, sacrificing that that time um, and that effort, and obviously money too. And when that lead comes in, you got to really value that lead and, and make the most of it. So yeah, um, well, it's a lot easier to appreciate, right? When you're the one that's putting out the bandit signs. Oh yeah, for sure. It's Absolutely. a lot harder, and you know, there's no disrespect to it, you know people that work with us, but mm -hmm. like when the lead is just there and like it's for them to follow up. Yep. It's not the same fashion. Yeah. Because they're not the one banging in the bandit signs. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I, um, I mean, I tell it to my guys now, like fast forward, it's like, I mean, we're, I mean, we're all spoiled, you know, yeah. it's like, we just hit our database and our CRM and it's just like, it's just another lead. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the day, it's like, man, we really had to work our ass off to get those right. leads, you know? So yep. for sure. Uh, any other struggles? Um, you know, just uh, like, uh, like, figuring stuff out you know it's like you you work your ass off for like a month and then mm -hmm. get a deal under contract and aren't able to sell it numbers aren't right um stuff like that um but i i mean struggles it's just like i mean it's it's not too difficult i guess if you just follow instructions so right um, so how did you overcome that um i guess or, just you know buying like so buying it wrong how did you mm -hmm. overcome that at that time obviously you yeah. have different solutions now but yeah so i guess uh, really learning how to evaluate the property versus just throwing crap against the wall and hoping mm -hmm. it works just because i'm like a salesperson quote unquote it's like i could sell anything yeah um then i realized it's like man i really got to make sure the numbers work so the end investor can actually make money too mm -hmm. um so actually just really studying the market and, and studying the areas and comps and really getting a thorough understanding of how to evaluate properties yeah um as well as like the construction side of it too so uh, but i mean you can figure that out in like a couple of weeks and right yeah. oh absolutely yeah uh so when i was looking you up the first thing i found was doxa mm -hmm. what's that about yeah so that was actually uh my marketing company um mm -hmm. that i operated in um me and my business partner um where he was actually my old boss at the time uh, when I started in sales door to door when I was like yeah. 18, 19. Um, so me and him kind of built a sales teams all around the country and um, we partnered with Fortune 500 companies selling their products either door to door or business to business. Yeah. Um, so our business model was um, hiring sales reps, paying them all commission, um, and then having them go door to door, or business to business, and then um, slowly organically building leadership out around the country. So yeah. um, it was pretty amazing on what we did in that company. and. Um, I appreciate it every day just because, I mean, yeah, it was like a, a million dollar company, but um, having that skill set and that experience and then now being able to apply that to real estate helped dramatically. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet it translated really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're doing 30, 40 deals a month, right? Mm -hmm. Those are crazy numbers. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing different than everybody else? Yeah, so I, that's funny that you said that because I always try to be like opposite of everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, if people are doing this, then I'm going to go do this just because it's like, hey, it's saturated over here. You know right. what I mean? Um, and I really started to pay attention to the industry. And um, what I realized is there's a lot of gurus out there. There's a lot of information on YouTube. There's mm -hmm. a, a lot of um, literally free information out there that yeah. anybody can obtain. Um, when it comes to like marketing and finding deals and stuff like that, which is great. I mean, it, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but what a lot of people aren't doing is, yeah, you can get the leads to come in, but like once you grow past a certain amount of inbound leads that are coming in, you physically can't close all those leads yourself. So what I realized is like, um, once you get the marketing standpoint down, it's like, man, the, the sales team is actually probably more important than the actual marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, just on being able to to leverage not just your time but other people's time um, right. as well as being able to organically build more individuals um, and having them handle the phones and the leads as well so um, I guess that's that's what makes our company different is just we focus more on the actual sales team mm -hmm. um, recruiting training um, and developing our people um, within our company versus just the actual marketing because uh, yeah that's one division in our company but mm -hmm. Uh, we believe, or I mean, I, I honestly believe that the sales team is probably the most important. So talk about that. How are you, first, how are you finding them? Um, well, I guess starting off, it's like people that I know. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I did that is especially starting an organic 
uh, acquisitions team in real estate um, is I really wanted to work with people I could trust, especially because they're they're handling like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of information with leads. Right. Um, so, you know, just like on Instagram and, and Facebook, your social media, um, just kind of showing people what you're doing. And, I mean, if you follow me on social media, obviously you can kind of see that I'm always posting what I'm yeah. doing. Yep. Um, and obviously people get attracted to that. You know, mm -hmm. people see that you're growing, you're doing something different. They want to be a part of that. Um, and then obviously if the core values fit, we're able to bring people on board and, and give them an opportunity to grow with us. Right. Um, so as far as being able to find them, um, I mean, we stick to people that we know um, or we get to know. And then social media is probably our biggest. So people um, reach out to you. Source. Yeah. And say, hey, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I like to do the same thing. Yeah. Or it's like, hey, it's like, I love what you're doing. I'm doing this right now. Um, I don't see I can grow as much as if I was with working with you guys. And it's right. like a real thing. And, um, you know, it, it offers a, a platform for us to express what we're doing um, live time, just kind of like this. Yeah. Um, and people get interested in it. And I mean, there people are probably watching this other job right now. It's like, man, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? So, right. Um, but yeah, we use a social media platform uh, for recruiting for the most part. And then uh, uh, we haven't really built out uh, uh, like the like the traditional recruiting types, like with Indeed, Career Builder, mm -hmm. and stuff like that yet. But right. we're going to be launching that next week. So, okay. Yeah. So you got people coming in. Mm -hmm. How are you onboarding them? Yeah, so um, obviously the traditional onboarding process, like if you were to go get a job at like a fast food restaurant, mm -hmm. um, what do you typically have to do? You gotta sit through and watch this video, <laughs> like what this company, was about the company, here's what we do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's uh, like the don't, intro, don't, right? Don't harass anybody. Yeah, it's like the red lines, the intro, this is the expectations, this yeah. is what you're gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a process, you know, especially when people make big career moves. Yeah. Um, and we're recruiting people all around the country. It's like some of our top guys come from like three hours away and move their, their family and their and their wife and or from like literally getting a moving truck and packing all their shit and coming all the way to Dallas. So people are moving from out of state yeah. to work Oh, absolutely. You. Yeah. So you're like a corporation. Oh, almost. yeah. Almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I like it like that, you know. That's it's pretty like cool. A, um, I, I strategically recruit in a certain manner, in a certain yeah. way, and um, and it's it's tough to, to kind of get your feet in the door with us just because it's not like we're hiring everybody, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and it's like my last company, it's like, hey, if we hire, the more people we could hire, the more money our company makes. So it's like, we're just hiring everybody. Yeah. Um, now it's kind of like, man, we really got to be careful and pay attention to those core, core values when we bring people on just because it's not like a, a short term gig or it's not like something that we can just give access to everybody. So, um, so but it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. What are your core values? Um, so obviously honesty, um, and loyalty. I mean, uh, like, uh, when, when we, when we look at people and their core values, it's not necessarily, hey, this is just a whole bunch of words mm -hmm. on our board and this is what we abide by. It's like, hey, who in your life uh, respects you the most or who believes in you the most, you know? Mm -hmm. um, or if you are uh, to, to leave your last position, who do you think you'd still be in contact with? Um, and, and little things like that, it, you can really um, dive into people and kind of see where they're at. On so based on their, how they answer those questions. Yeah. Yeah. You'll figure out whether they're a fit or not. Yeah. It's like, hey, Interesting. your your last your two jobs ago, do you mm -hmm. still are you still in contact with any of those people that you, you work with back then? You worked mm -hmm. there for like a year. And it's like, no, I haven't I don't like any of those people. Yeah. It's like, well, what about this job? Mm -hmm. And it's like you can kind of learn little patterns like, oh, you're probably like a piece of shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um but yeah, it's like to be honest with you, I just like I haven't really like sat down and have like my list of words and put them on my wall in my office. Yeah. It's kinda like lame. Okay. <laughs> so I guess it's not LA, but I guess in the book traction, it'll tell you different. Yeah. Okay. So you've got your, your core values and that's how you're hiring mm -hmm. and firing. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now you got the core values. How are you training these guys? Yeah. Um, so, um, obviously like when, when I started in the venture of just going all real estate, I had to like sit them down, um, one on one, and mm -hmm. um, I called it the launch pad. So it was in my office. It's just me and them, so I could give them like time and focus, and make sure that um, we're like operating and understanding the the system and the model um, very strategically. Because when you're building sales teams, um, one of the most important things that you have to understand on the initial approach is duplication. Mm -hmm. um, so if you overcomplicate things, it's going to be really difficult to duplicate yourself. Um, and yeah. a lot of sales gurus and real estate gurus, they know a ton about real estate, which is great. Um, but the problem with that is 
you can't take like 10, 15 years of knowledge and just give it to somebody on their first day or their second day or even the first year. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a strive and a journey. Um, so what, what I did is I really just simplified it. Um, and I just looked back to the, the aspects of sales and what works on actually getting a product moved to individual to individual. And it's just personality and um, getting to know somebody on the phone and just really developing that personal relationship with people um, in yeah. an organic standpoint. Um, and then once we develop that relationship, then we, we dive into, hey, this is the price we needed at or whatever the case it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's that that one-on-one -on -one approach is probably the, the um, most important when we're training people. Um, now it's to a point where um, the duplication process for leadership um, has been passed down to certain people in our organization where That's when cool. we do bring people on, then, hey, you're sitting down with this person. Mm -hmm. You're going to be responsible for them. You're like their, their overseer, their manager. Um, and then you get like a percentage of, of what they bring in um, throughout right. their entire work of working here. So um, that's kind of how we're building it out. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so you said, you know, you got, you got to a point now you got managers, right? Mm -hmm. So how yeah. many people are in your organization? So we actually have, uh, let's see, we actually, I mean, in office, I would say uh, 20 people full time. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we have cold callers, so we have a ton of cold callers, but on payroll um, every week, we have over 60 people now. Um, wow. Yeah, so it's like, you look at that, it's like, man, I'm really um, like employing 60 f like people that mm -hmm. like pay bills for their families and stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's a lot of responsibility, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's it's awesome to kind of see that it's like man I'm, I'm really making an impact on people it's not just me you know what right. I mean so. so the cold callers mm -hmm. local overseas yeah so we actually use um, uh, call geeks in in Mexico so we have okay. 16 callers there and then we have about 20 cold callers in the Philippines okay um, so we're just leveraging both of those so you got 36 um, cold callers yeah 36, okay yeah. Um, so you guys so they're calling what list um, so we're hitting, I mean, pretty much all the, the standard absentee, 55 plus, uh, the high equity, the unknown mm -hmm. equity. Um, those are pretty much the main the main list that we hit. Um, but we're when we buy lists, obviously, because we have a lot of cold callers, we have to buy a lot of data. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Uh, like we're like we really don't have that many filters. We're just if it's a lead it's a phone number, we're able to call them, then yeah. we put it through. So. So we, we and buy a lot. Yeah. You're buying throughout Texas, right? Yeah, all of Texas. Okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, but your people are based mainly in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So then you're pretty much buying everything over the phone. Oh yeah, yeah. Even on, so, even in Dallas, yeah. Um, so how are you handling? Let's walk through that, right? You negotiate a deal over the phone. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? Like you got a verbal yeah. agreement over the phone. Well, right. um, we we don't really like verbal agreements. We like sign contracts. Um, and and the reason being is because it's it's pretty it's. What you got to understand is like when you're talking to a seller, they don't really do this too often. I know we do it like every day, so mm -hmm. it's normal to us. And sometimes investors forget about that. It's like the the person that you're talking to probably only done this once or never before. So they mm -hmm. don't understand the process. So we're just exp explaining the process on how it works. It's like, hey, um, we're going to put this property under contract to purchase. So we have interest in the property and then we're going to send one of our guys to go take pictures. Mm -hmm. um, after we go take pictures, we're going to send it to our contractors and then we're going to walk some of our contractors to the property. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So we like to keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. So co callers, they're calling everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you got um, how many acquisition people? Um, so we have about 10 in acquisitions right now. Okay. So yeah. they qualify the lead, mm -hmm. pass off the acquisitions. Yep. An acquisition runs the appointment, runs yep. the call, yep. locks it up, mm -hmm. and it gets passed off. Yep. So uh, co callers, I'm assuming, are just a wage, right? It's just. Yeah. Um, some sort of hourly salary. Oh yeah, like how we pay them. Yeah, yeah. we just pay them by the hour. Okay. Uh, acquisitions. Mm -hmm. How do you compensate them? Yeah. So um, we actually have junior acquisitions, and then we have senior acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So junior acquisitions, they start off with a thousand fifteen hundred dollars salary. Mm -hmm. um, then we pay them one percent, um, and then we we base it on tiers. And then I mean, if we have to, if they choose, like, hey, I need some cash and something like that, we can just give them like twenty five dollars per contract that's mm -hmm. signed. Et cetera, et cetera, because it's it's kind of like a training phase, um, especially you don't have that much sales experience because we want to dedicate one of our leaders to come, hey, like one on one train with you and spend mm -hmm. time with you. So we have to compensate them as well to make sure you're successful. Um, and then we have senior acquisitions and they get anywhere from five to 10 percent. Mm -hmm. um, so if you make under fifty thousand dollars in gross, you're making five percent. 
um, anything above 100,000, then you're making 10%. Mm. Um, so that's kind of how we, we pay out for acquisitions. Of the fee? Yeah, yeah, of the fee. Okay. Um, and then the acquisition guys, are they responsible for any outbound calls or everything is just? No, I mean, cold calling is warm transfer. Yeah, everything is like a warm transfer. Okay. Um, cold calling is great. Um, and I know a lot of people do that in house, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to have a bunch of in house cold callers and we just found it more profitable just having in house acquisitions. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause we were, we were running out of space a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. we we're like, we could either get a bigger space or get more quality people or develop our people better. Um, but what's gonna be more profitable? So we just, fired all the cold callers and mm-hmm. or promoted some of them fired the rest of them and then all right. uh, we just have all in-house acquisitions and dispositions and transactions operations. okay uh one thing that i thought carlos and sal what they do is interesting mm-hmm. is they've got a lead manager someone mm-hmm. that follows up yeah if the acquisition guy can't lock them down there but mm-hmm. There's a potential in the future. Yep. Do you guys have something like that? Yeah. So that's where our junior acquisitions comes in. It's similar, um, except for we don't call them lead managers. We call them junior acquisitions. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll handle some of the like the colder leads that come in and um, do the follow ups, et cetera, et cetera, um, while they're learning um, and they're learning how to pitch people. They're learning the process, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once they're promoted to acquisitions, then hey, there's another junior acquisition. So we yeah. just constantly bring them in. Okay. Yeah. And how about moving the property? Um, so dispositions. Mm-hmm. Um, so once it's under contract, we'll send our boots on the ground and go take pictures. Um, we'll have transactions work with title, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we're, we're scheduling times for showings. If there's people on the property, if it's vacant, then our disposition team just shops it to everybody and their mom. Yeah. Um, but if it, if it's occupied, then obviously we'll have like a showing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have three disposition guys right now. We just hired another one. So we'll have four, um, disposition guys. Um, and they just literally shop the property to pretty much everybody in Texas. Okay. And are they responsible for developing relationships with cash buyers? Lists? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what their, their full-time job is. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they first start off, it's, it's kind of difficult obviously cause they don't have that, that list or that brand or whatever on social media and stuff like that. But right. when we bring them in, obviously we train them on what works and, um, how to organically build that list out. Mm-hmm. Um, because we like to work just off like the VIP, you know, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, you can buy a list, you can just uh, spam everything and stuff like that. It's a lot easier for us um, to just work the VIP with like real cash buyers and just, mm-hmm. hey, call them, have a conversation with them, explain our process. Um, and then when we have a property in that area that they really buy in, um, they're the first ones to, to be there with the earnest money. So okay. um, that's kind of how we build that out. So it takes a little bit more time to, to do it with that approach, but mm-hmm. it's a, a little bit more organic and it's a, a lot less stressful when the the contracts come in just because we essentially know we have a buyer for it. Oh, you've maximized in. yeah, your, yeah. Um, your, your, your return. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So 30 to 40 a month today, what were the challenges, like the major, you know, milestones mm-hmm. from doing like your first deal to like, was there a number was like, man, I got to start hiring. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, I guess I skipped like a big section. Um, I was actually doing rehabs pretty heavily before I really started wholesaling. Mm-hmm. Um, before July, to be honest with you, I probably did like 12 wholesales in total. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was doing mostly rehabs. Um, so what I would do is I would go raise a bunch of money. Um, and I would just buy rehabs from wholesalers. And that was my business model while I was operating in the sales company. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just kind of like, you know, I was like getting my feet wet a little bit. And then all of a sudden I look, look over and I'm like running crews out of like five, six houses a month. And then. Um, before I actually like made a serious decision, I'm like, man, I needed to just focus on wholesaling. I was, Mm -hmm. I was doing like 10, 10 rehabs a month on average. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I guess in in my market, I I became like a quote unquote, like local celebrity, um, just cause I would buy everything if it made sense, you know, Mm -hmm. everybody knew who I was. Um, but the problem with that, it's, it was just really difficult to, to scale it or to duplicate it. Um, just because there wasn't like a, a system behind the networking approach to just find the deals from wholesalers. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I went to Carlos and Sal's event, I was really motivated to figure out how to actually dive into the marketing aspect. Um, because that was I, your, yeah. your, their, your, their first all-in event? Yeah, their first all-in event. Um, and that what helped you flip the switch? Yeah, it's because, I mean, I was spending like $100,000, $120,000 a month just on assignments. Um, and I was like, man, what if I just spent that in, in marketing? What would yeah. happen? Right. You know, and that's essentially what happened. It's like, I don't, I don't <laughs> like, yeah, I could spend a hundred grand on marketing. It doesn't make a difference because it's yeah. like, I was doing that anyways, just find, having people find me deals, you know? Yeah. So, um, and obviously, I mean, I still buy some here and there for rehabs, but we wholesale most for the most part. But I guess one of the biggest challenges, um, 
while scaling in real estate in a sense um, was just finding that way to develop a team around it um, to duplicate that process because um, like if if I see myself doing something I'm, I'm not physically doing it just because I have to do it um, at this point I'm, I'm only doing it to learn how to develop a system so I can train somebody else how to do that yeah um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because if you look at like the the biggest companies in the world billion dollar companies and you look at how many people uh, represent that company or work for that company mm -hmm. and it's going to be in the tens twenties thirty thousands right so you can't look at like the ceo of that company it's like this guy does everything you know <laughs> no. what i mean yeah. um so if you look at it in the real estate sense it's like there's a like thousands of mom and pop shops out there mm -hmm. and nobody's really like cracked the code it's like hey let's be a billion dollar wholesaling company yeah is that um, the goal oh yeah for sure yeah awesome so you're gonna go nationwide oh yeah and we have to so. Yeah. When's that start? <laughs> uh, right now. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Scoping out Phoenix right now, huh? Yeah. So I was like in traffic. I'm like, hmm, there's traffic. There's a lot of people here. Is it traffic oh, jam? Yeah. I think we're, uh, I think we're the fifth largest Metro now. Wow. Okay. So when did you realize it was time to, or what were the challenges you had, you know, when you're, you, you obviously you went transition from flipping the wholesaling. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were the major obstacles you had? when he's like, all right, I'm gonna spend a hundred grand a month in wholesaling. Yeah, so I guess um, some of the main, uh, like, I mean, it's one of the biggest ones actually was we we're getting a lot of contracts and it was getting difficult to move. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, especially like I had a couple acquisition guys and it was no transaction coordinator, no dispositions, no nothing. And it was just like me just trying to market all these deals on Facebook. And I'm like, these guys are like, let me sell. And I'm like, no, just stay, stay focused on acquisitions. Um, so we had a, a little bit of a fall off for like a, a month or two, mm -hmm. um, which was pretty challenging. And then I was like, well, obviously I just need to hire some disposition guys. Right. Um, so that's, that's what we did. And now it's, it's, it's flowing pretty smoothly. So you said July. So that yeah. to go from basically were you, when you were buying, were you even wholesaling mm -hmm. at that time? I mean, I, I would do like maybe six a year wholesales. Okay. So you were doing that to where you are today, doing 30 to 40 a month. Mm -hmm. That's in less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you can you can look at it like that, but um, I mean, what you have to understand, it's like f compared to like my last business, like I was operating and um, like overseeing like 80 people at a time. So mm -hmm. it's not as challenging to me personally, you know? So right. it's like, I feel like I still have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm obviously not the best or the biggest in the country, Yeah. Um, but eventually to, to get to that point, I still have a lot of work to do. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see, we got a couple of questions in here. Um, So, um, Roger Pena was wanted to know how many cold callers you had. You said you had call geeks and you got like yeah, 16? so thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah, thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. All right. So, um, so so thirty to forty a month, and that's pretty consistent. Yeah. How, what markets are you in in Texas? All of Texas. All of Texas. Yeah, like Dallas, we, Houston, San Antonio, Austin. Yeah. Like, like if you live in Texas and you own a house, you probably have your phone number. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna. They're gonna hear from you. Yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna uh, get an RVM like once a week from us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's I go to like meetups. It's like, dude, leave me the alone. I'm like, dude, that's not me. I don't know. We're just, oh yeah, I get. <laughs> we're I get just blanketing the whole state from our friends. Yeah, in town, mm -hmm. I get their I get their voicemails. Yeah, well, I guess like once we had the dispositions teams, now we're just like banging it out, mm -hmm. um, and we're we're getting buyers like literally all over Texas so we're we're trying to strategically build it out so when a deal comes in in like an off-brand city we already have buyers for it so mm -hmm. um but it's growing you know so so are you operating also in areas like rural areas oh yeah yeah oh absolutely we what are the challenges those. in doing rural areas i mean probably obviously the buyers but um once you have the buyers i mean like rural areas people will sell their house for pennies and then if right. you have somebody that really wants something they'll pay top dollar so it's yeah. just glamorous so, so the spreads are better. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So it's a lot more work, obviously, but the average right. deal size is probably double than if it's an MSA. Okay. So that's what we're finding. So everybody always looks at like, find the, the best zip codes mm -hmm. with the most cash buyers, which is sexy because we're operating in, in zip codes that <laughs> people aren't even looking at just because it's that, that doing the opposite approach, you know what right. I mean? Just doing opposite of what everybody else is doing. Yeah, the contrarian approach, I love it. Uh, so, um, Omari wants to know what's your average spread per deal that you shoot for, um, that we shoot for. It's about 30,000, but our, our average deal size right now is about 26.7. Okay. Uh, Aaron Alvarado wants to know, is there any real estate books that you, you would recommend? 
Um, it kind of depends on the level of where you're at. I, w- I mean, if you're just starting off, read Flip by Nick Reese. Mm-hmm. Um, he's actually going to be in Phoenix, so I'm excited to, to chop it up with him. Yeah. Um, I mean, Traction's a good book. Um, I would say, I mean, to be honest, Flip's the only real estate book I actually read. Yeah. Um, I, I read a lot of, like, personal development books. Um, that, I mean, it's the mindset. I mean, because, once again, it's just, like, you can get the million dollar formula on YouTube, but it's just like taking action is the most important part, you know? Oh, that's the biggest thing. I yeah. get people that reach out to me on Instagram and yeah. you know, they're thank you for the, for the information blah, blah, and yeah. I always respond with, that's awesome, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. What action have you taken? Exactly. Right, because all the information is useless mm-hmm. without the action. Yep. Uh, how many leads do you require to do 30, 40 deals a month? How many leads? Mm-hmm. Um, so our average uh, contract uh, per lead is about one over 37, mm-hmm. um, which is low, or it's actually higher than what it used to be. It used to be like one over 32, um, but as we're hiring more people, it's it's we're trying to get it back down to one over 30. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess you can kind of do the math in there. And then, um, but our average fallout is about 20%. What's that? Our average fallout mm-hmm. is about 20%. So I would say about 1,500 leads okay. ish per month. So um, just for everyone to understand, when you say lead, what is a lead to you? If they want to sell in 30 days or less. Okay. That's the lead to us. All right, perfect. Um, is there any particular marketing technique that you like the best? Um, obviously, cold call. Mm-hmm. Um, Bandit signs is my love. That's yeah. what I started with. I'm still loyal. Um, yeah. And a lot of people, they give up on it for whatever reason, and we just scale it even more every every month. Um, yeah. So we're putting thousands out every week, and, uh, I mean, those are just home run deals as soon as they say they're trying to sell a house. Interesting. So, yeah. You're finding there's less competition on those? Um, yeah, no. I mean, I, I mean, I don't really see competition at all. I mean, yeah. I even train my guys. If you see a Bannon sign out there that's like ours, uh, they're trying to buy houses, they're sitting it right next to, to theirs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so you're the competition. Well, no, yeah, I, I mean, it's, the, the way I see it is you see two bandit signs, we buy houses right next to it, and, and you want to sell a house, what are you going to do? Call both. Call both, right? right? So one guy's not going to answer. Love that mindset. Uh, so obviously you're pulling data. Is there any particular data that you like pulling the best? Um, data, um, the best list is probably going to be absentee, that I'd say. Um I, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, that's probably an easier list to start with, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. But Is there a particular company you like pulling data from? Uh, we use List Source. And List then, Source? Yeah, we skip it through Need to Skip. Need to Skip? Yeah. That was the next question. Mm-hmm. All right, so you got 10 acquisition guys, four disposition guys, mm-hmm. 36 gold callers. Is there anyone else in your organization? Yeah, so I have two transaction coordinators. I have a CEO now, actually the guy that got me into real estate, Prince. Oh, um, he's the one that? Yeah. Cool. So, um, we kind of like merged with him. We like him buying, buying you out. You're, you're working with us now. Type yeah. deal. So it was good for, for all parties. And, um, we have a couple in-house agents that work with us full time, okay. um, which is pretty cool. And then, um, obviously our boots on the ground and, um, they work full time. Um, they don't do anything else cause they're so busy going around taking pictures. So boots on the ground, what mm-hmm. is that exactly? They go take pictures and if they have to meet with right. sellers, okay. sign contracts, stuff like that. Okay, so that's different than your disposition guys. Yeah, yeah, disposition guys stay in the office. So our boots on the ground, we pay them 50 to 100 bucks each time they go to a property. Mm-hmm. So they're able to work, literally work full time. Um, and then we have our bandit time team. So we have four guys that, that do that full time. So, um, man, well, uh, that's the yeah. reason why you're asking why people are, stop doing this because they don't have four guys doing yeah. <laughs> putting out bandit signs. Right. Well, I guess the, the, the biggest thing too is like when I bring somebody on, I want them full time. Yeah. Um, and th- there's no half assing anything right. when you have somebody full time and, um, when you have somebody full time, especially when they're compensated off effort and tasks, they're just going to do more, you mm-hmm. know, just cause they, they need to pay their bills and they want to grow. They want to do fun stuff. They want to invest, et cetera, et cetera. So you can give them that platform, that opportunity to do that, All right. um, in this business, which is pretty beautiful. Cool. Um, are there any KPIs that you like to track? Um, what I like to track, I, I definitely like tracking leads per contract. Um, I, we also like to track, uh, I, I know people who track like calls per contract. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually track, uh, conversations, uh, per contract. So, if, uh, our acquisition guys are on the phone for more than two minutes. 
are able to track that on call rail, mm -hmm. um, which is very effective because, hey, like out of five conversations, you're able to get a contract. Like, this is amazing. You're a salesperson. Imagine if you called 10 people and had 10 conversations right? Um, type deal um, versus like, hey, you talked to 20 people and had 20 conversations and you don't have a contract. What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, because the leads are expensive. The data is expensive. You know, it's we can't just freelance and market cold and never talk to them again. We got to make sure that we're paying attention to that stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we, we like tracking that, but we also like to track, uh, like on call there's a pretty cool feature on who's talking the most, the agent or the, the customer. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're tracking that too. Our guys are like getting ass beatings, like, Hey, who's talking the most? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carlos shared that in our, in a, in mm -hmm. our meetup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's so, like, I think you guys, he was targeting like 70, 30. What do you guys find? Yeah. 70, 30. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the less you say, the more you make. Just keep it simple. Yeah, <laughs> simple enough, right? Easy yeah. to remember. Uh, okay, so uh, who is this? Um, Jacqueline Brown Kelly wants to know what's the game plan. Uh, take over the fucking world. <laughs> I love it. Um, so Omar wants to know if you make offers over the phone. You do everything over the phone. Yeah. Uh, Tell those guys to get back to work. Yeah, get back to work, guys. <laughs> yeah, at the office, probably watching this live. And so let's see what else was there. Do you have any NDAs in place for you guys on their boots on the ground? Mm. Yes. Um, so pretty much everybody that works with us, they they on the onboarding process, it's pretty pretty red lines that hey, you're you're operating in this company, we're going to give you everything and mm -hmm. you can't operate anywhere else um, within like a two year period past termination or if you leave. Yeah. Um, and I believe that's pretty important just because I mean, everything that we're doing as far as on the marketing standpoint is really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and when we first kind of dabbled into it, we had to have situations where like people would come in, try to learn stuff and then just bounce take in. data and yeah. bounce. And it's like, oh, we're probably not going to do that again. So yeah, um, that guy's facing a lawsuit and it's not pretty for him. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, Dominique wants to know, Dominique Allen, how do you train your cold callers to be effective when qualifying leads? Um, so cold calling is pretty actual is actually the simplest thing in the world just because you can go on Google and get a cold calling script. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can hire somebody to actually train them um, full time. So they're actually hiring people all day on Upwork.com or, um, or people that they know in their area in Mexico or in Philippines. Um, and people in, in and cold calling, it's it's actually a simple entry level task. Um, so I don't really run that department. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, I just train somebody how to train somebody, and then that was it. Right. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, it's like a hey, you're gonna be on the phone with them for like five minutes, say these words, and send the lead over. That's pretty much it. Um, so Pedro wants to know: Are you emailing blast your to your buyers? Um, we did, and the I mean, it's a funny story. So um, Carlos and Sal bought. I bought a list from them, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. And they didn't tell me that I couldn't just send it to everybody at once. So it's like, yeah, let's just send a $2,000 email real fast to like a couple hundred thousand people. <laughs> and uh, our, e our email servers are like, fuck no. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what I have to do to, I don't know if I have to, cause it, when I send an email from my house, it's different than sending it at the office. But I think we like broke our server at the mm -hmm. office where we are not allowed to send emails, <laughs> even to like title companies. Like if we send an email to a title company, it like automatically goes to spam. So. Being new uh, to, to the approach of sending it out in mass is, is something yeah. that we are experiencing a challenge in, um, but we're going to figure it out. But Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. tech guys that specialize in that. So you'll, yeah. you'll so if you out. are a developer, a tech guy, and you're looking for an opportunity, we're actually hiring full time. So Yeah, because yeah, I've, I've made that mistake too. Yeah. Um, do you encourage your people to move up, like to grow, get promoted? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, um, I would. Like that's that's the like the game plan. Like uh, when you're running a, a massive operation, you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you're gonna cap out mentally. You only have so much time in the day. Um, since you have so much time in the day, you're not gonna be capable of training a hundred people or even having a hundred conversations in a day by yourself. It's just not it's not possible. Yeah. Um, so when you're scaling, you gotta learn how to duplicate that process and develop a system um, and a pay plan to be able to do that. Um, for your guys to, to get promoted to, to handle more responsibility and handle more training. Yeah. Um, so for example, um, when a, a junior act starts, they're gonna be training with 
uh, elite acquisitions and they're going to be responsible in training them. Mm -hmm. um, and then their goal is to get them to acquisition so they don't have to be so one on one with them anymore and they can get back on the phone, yeah. um, which is awesome. And then once your acquisitions, you want to be lead acquisition so you can now start developing a sales team um, within the organization and you can start running a business within a business and develop more free time, leverage more time and make more money, um, make a percentage on your entire organization, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so our guys got, got a pretty cool opportunity, um, I would say. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, is there any mastermind group that has impacted you the most? Um, mastermind groups that impacted me most, All In was, was probably really good one of the best um i i do love going to masterminds especially high paid masterminds just because mm -hmm. it kind of cuts out like the entry level um i mean it, i'm i'm not really entry level and it i don't really have like the time to to mentor people which is because i'm focused on my business um so i do appreciate going to masterminds um but i try to go to as many as possible so okay um, if i see like a strategic group getting together if it's free or whatever it costs i'll probably go yeah. all right uh, what is your monthly marketing expense? I know you're saying you were at 120 yeah. when you um, started, uh, when, you tr when you made the move. Yeah, so we're, we're probably still around there. Um, we, we like to buy data in, in bulk. Mm -hmm. um, so like when we buy data, we buy all of it. So it's, it's really expensive mm -hmm. um, just because we're preparing for what's going to happen in like the next quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we bought a couple markets already. So it was a couple hundred grand. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome. So it's, and yeah, it's like, hey, you could spend a couple hundred grand and it's profitable, it's cool, but um, we're, when we buy stuff and data and things of those sorts, it's for like months down the road. Yeah. So that's kind of how we're, we're, we're rolling right now. What about monthly overhead? Um, monthly overhead, our office is like seven grand a month. Um, payroll is probably like 56 grand a month. Um, so it's, I mean, anywhere from like 60 to, to 80, give or take. Okay. Yeah. So a couple million a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are there any resources that you love? Resources as, um, as in what, like gyms, food, gas, <laughs> gasoline, <laughs> um, any particular tools, um, CRM, mm. anything that you, you know, you like, you couldn't live without. Yeah, call rail, um, bless my life because we can keep people accountable, fire people account with accountability, which mm -hmm. is awesome. It's a beautiful tool. Um, obviously, Podio is our baby. Um, I actually spent a lot of time on Podio just trying to figure out how to, I like taught myself how to code mm -hmm. uh, just because I was inspired by Sal. I was like, hey, he, yeah. he's Podio ninja, you know? Yeah. And you're able to make adjustments like that versus just using like investor views. Mm -hmm. I don't really recommend it just because I'm a sales guy and a business owner. So it's like, I don't want to be coding all day, but hey, if one of my guys needs something changed on CRM, we're able to change it like that. So yeah. um, it's, a, it's a cool thing to have. But once again, it's I'm learning it so I can train somebody else how to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so Podio is good. Um, we use obviously MLS too. Um, and then in Texas, we use Propelio. Um, shout out to my guys, uh, um, Daniel. Yeah. Um, you, you did an interview with them too, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just did. We just did an interview. And they did a pop up as well. Yeah. Daniel and Ryan are my, my boys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, are there any apps? Uh, Tor uh, Torrance Williams wants to know: Is there any apps that you that you use? Um, yeah. There's a Podio app. There's a Call Rail app. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, for Bandit signs, Simple Crew is pretty cool. So we're able to track uh, where the signs placed with the picture with the time. Um, and uh, you can't like fluff it. So you give guys some signs that don't just put it in a dumpster somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate that app as well. But um, the chase.com app is pretty cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but is. yeah, it's like, I it I'm not really the, the like the tech guy where yeah. I have a whole bunch of stuff. I'm a sales guy. Um, I know how to train sales reps and develop sales teams. Cool. So what would you do if the market shifts, if it takes a dip? Um, well, we're actually um, looking to partner with some liquor stores in, mm -hmm. in Dallas, so we're probably going to start some liquor chains, um, which is a market-proof product. Mm -hmm. um, but when it does dip, we're pretty excited because uh, we're, we're preparing for uh, doing a lot more wraps, sub twos, um, and then getting back into the buying holds. Yeah, um, it's just too aggressive right now. Um, I would I would say to just focus more on buying holds versus fix and flips or wholesales, mm -hmm. um, just because things are still moving top dollar. <laughs> pretty yeah. quickly so oh yeah they are yeah, so hopefully it does take a, a shit here pretty soon just because <laughs> yeah all the gurus will disappear and stop teaching everybody everything and people don't know what to do and they call our company <laughs> well i think they'll always be gurus so they just, who no, knows what, yeah, if they know sure. what they're talking about um what is your why 
my why. So, uh, yeah, I think um, that's probably one of the most important things to me. Um, it's probably my family. Um, when I first started in sales and I started really taking it serious, my sister uh, was sick at the time and she was having non epileptic seizures. Um, so she couldn't work like full time. Um, but I, I wanted to take on more responsibility and help my sister out, my, my family in that standpoint. And when I kind of took on that, that role of being able to, to spend more time with her, I, I knew that was important. Um, I had to take my, my job and my career more seriously. Um, and then I learned it's like, man, once I took the foot off the gas just for myself, I like doubled and tripled just like that just because I put somebody else before myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, my mom, was like she's probably one of my biggest inspirations. Um, she worked, I mean, she raised four, four children all by herself as a single parent, um, worked multiple jobs at the same time. And um, her, her last job, she worked in a refinery and she used to send us pictures um, this is when I was in sales as well of like her hands bleeding oh. um, just because she'd work like hard manual labor like 16 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that 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 took like a, a pretty big toll on like I need to make things happen because I'm not going to have my mom continue to work at this job anymore. Yeah. Um, and what she doesn't, she hasn't worked in like two years. Um, I mean, I help her significantly and not necessarily retired her, but it's like I want her to focus on what she loves in life. Right. Um, so. And, and I mean, obviously, it's just my family is probably the most important thing to me. Um, but as you bring people on into the business, it's you, you start to gain more family members, you know, and you right. start to see babies are, are born that you knew somebody before you even had a girlfriend, much less a wife, much right. less now a child um, with somebody. And you really develop that family bond with your people. Um, and it, it it becomes less about whatever the hell you have going on. It's it's more about like that a kid that was born, you know, and right. you start to work a lot differently and a, a lot more strategically when you make it about your family and about your people. Um, and you'll do whatever it takes to, to make sure that they win and that they have an opportunity to win, you know? That's, so that's incredible. Yeah. What is your biggest struggle right now? Um, my biggest struggle right now is probably, man, um, I guess if, like, I guess it was yesterday was Wednesday. I was flying out here um, and I was packing my suitcase and I was leaving. I'm like, man, I'm mentally exhausted. Like when you're running a big operation, it just comes in toll not just on your body and you're getting mm-hmm. like a baller belly and stuff like that. But just mentally, it's it's it gets draining sometimes, you know, and it's very stressful and you gain some gray hairs and stuff like that. Your yeah. barber's like, what the heck? You're 24. You have gray hairs. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's about my people, dog. Like I'm out here in the, in the trenches with them, you know, I want right. to help them win. Um, but just gaining that clarity of 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 learning how to balance my time so I'm not as stressed mm-hmm. um, and like un- understanding that hey it's it's okay to like breathe like i got an right. apple watch it's like it just told me to breathe for like a minute and that was amazing <laughs> you know so i guess just finding time to actually breathe for myself uh, yeah. is probably a big challenge right now just because it's about everybody else you know um, um so i just came back from a strategic coach mm-hmm. I have, have you have you heard of that Mm-mm. so it was this big thing run by dan sullivan it's just about entrepreneurs okay i would definitely check that out because i yeah. think that one is the best for finding work-life balance mm-hmm. um really helps you kind of get clarity on on how to do that yeah um not that anyone needs necessarily equal balance Mm -hmm. but just how to be a little less stressed yeah with that yeah for sure Uh, i would definitely recommend checking that out uh what is your superpower my superpower is sales yeah like i I believe i'm a closer okay uh (laughs) did you natural your whole life uh well yeah come to think of it it's like my mom was telling me stories when i was a kid that i don't remember and i was like a salesman back then and yeah um and when i was like just learning that you had to make money and when i was 13 14 i Mm -hmm. was always the type to just like i was literally like flipping electronics out of my mom's basement and running a whole operation on craigslist (laughs) when i was like 15. yeah and people would come in and out of the house and she's like what are you doing and uh it, it was crazy. It, it, I understand where she's coming from now. Um, right. And then when I started driving, I started flipping cars in high school, um, just cars in and out. <laughs> um, so I, I gained a lot of, of like understanding people and what people want and the value add that you're able to give to the marketplace with your product at an early age, which I'm extremely blessed for. Yeah. Um, and then obviously taking 
uh, the, the leap of faith to go all commission sales and just making that your decision um, at 18 years old made a huge impact on my life just because it's just like I eat and breathe sales and it's like if everybody's a salesperson and right if you're not making all commission or on a business you're a pussy you know <laughs> so um now I'm looking at it, it's like man people are paying salary to their sales guys like are they scared they're gonna disappear if they yeah. don't <laughs> right so um but uh, yeah it's like I, I guess having some some basic sales skills helps dramatically and even when people ask me about real estate it's like hey how do I get started in real estate I'm like I I'd recommend just go get a sales job for a year you know yeah. just banging out all commission just work it a year and you'll learn more about anything in, in life just by being able to to do that and survive through the trenches and sales like that i can't believe you were flipping cars in high school yeah yeah that's so crazy i was just buying them on craigslist and taking them to, to garland texas and tending the windows putting rims on it um putting it back on craigslist like three days later and I made money, so. And what kind um, of what kind of money were you making? Flipping not cars? a lot, you know, like five hundred bucks here, two two grand here. It's pretty good for uh, high school. Yeah, I mean, it, it was cool, you know. Yeah. And, um, what were you when you were door knocking? What were you selling door knocking? So we were selling AT and T cable, okay. uh, Uverse, and then um, we essentially pioneered a B two B campaign for AT and T, um, and just doing it business to business. So. Cool. Um, yeah. What's the greatest lesson you've learned? Um, I guess the biggest lesson that I've learned in business is you never want to get content. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, people set their goals, right. And it's great to hit goals, but what's after that, you know, mm -hmm. um, are your goals big enough where it, it challenges you? Um, so setting too small of goals is actually a discomfort for the people that are around you. And what I mean by that, it's like, for example, when you have a team of, of two people and you set a goal of like, Hey, I'm going to make a hundred thousand for the company this month. And I'm like, well, what opportunities you give everybody else that w was working here? Like what yeah. good does that do anybody else but yourself? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, so set big, go big goals early, early on. Um, because it, it, you'll really challenge yourself to, to strive towards that. Um, but on top of that, it's like, you don't want to get content with a certain dollar amount or a certain type of success or, uh, achievement. Um, because after you cross that finish line, you're just going to take a break or you're right. just going to slow down. Um, so always be on pace and don't look at the money per se. Um, look at how many people you're able to impact in your organization versus how many dollars you can make. Yeah. Um, and I promise you'll be able to go a lot farther by doing that just because money is easy to make, mm -hmm. um, especially once you crack like the code. You know what I mean? Right. But what's after that? You know, you can have all the money in the world, but what good does that do anybody? Yeah. You know, it's just paper. I like that. What is your favorite, best, or most interesting failure? Um, the best failure? Mm-hmm. Um, man, I guess the, the best failure, well, I, I always tell the story, and people hate when I tell the story, but I actually lost money on a rehab. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> why would you say that? Um, I actually, me and my Prince actually, um, we lost a lot of money. It was like 40 or 50 grand between mm -hmm. both of us. And we were looking at that situation. It's like, man, I, we're so appreciative that it happened because now we know how to pull comps. Now we know how to buy it right. Now we know what it feels like to lose mm -hmm. and you don't want to lose again. Yeah. Um, losing sucks. I fucking hate losing. Do you like losing? I don't take it very well. No, you don't start a <laughs> podcast to be like number last on Apple or no, on Facebook. I'm, I'm always looking like, where's, where do I rank? Where How do I get better? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So losing is actually um, very significant for you in business because mm -hmm. you're going to learn how it feels yeah and you'll never want to feel like that again right you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so losing an employee sucks it's like damn i don't want to lose anybody else again how do i do it better the next time mm -hmm. you know um which is awesome so you can take tons of losses but if you're losing all the time what are you a loser or you're just lazy you don't want to mm -hmm. put up the work to go win you know yeah um so you mix a whole bunch of different things in in the mental brain to to get you to go um, but I think the biggest one for me is is not the fear of losing, but the feeling of losing, you know? Right. I don't want to feel like that ever. Well, I mean, you're definitely going in the right direction. And I think for sure learning from the failures, that's the, that's the constant theme yeah. from everyone that's been on this show. Absolutely. 
Uh, is there anything that you want to leave the listeners with? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, if you're, you're watching this and you're, you're paying attention to me and you're looking at Steve, um, I don't know um, where you guys are in business because I don't know how many people are watching. Um, but if you can take anything from me, um, I come from nothing. You know, I'm, I'm a small country town boy from Ohio, made my way to Texas, found my way in the real estate game, doing a lot of volume, helping a lot of people, have a bunch of employees. Um, but you can look at, at me and look at all the obstacles that I could face if I were actually focused on them. Mm -hmm. um, and you, throughout this entire interview, and I'm sure people were asking, it's like, what's your biggest failure? What's your biggest failure? What could you do better or mm -hmm. whatever? It's like, I don't know. I don't focus on that stuff. Right. I focus on what I'm good at. I focus on what's working. And if I lose over there, I don't even realize it happened just because it's part of the overhead, right? Mm -hmm. It's part of the cost of doing business. Right. Um, so understand that if I'm capable of doing this, so are you. I mean, I'm 24 years old, I'm uh, like ethnic, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm just a regular person. Um, but at the same time, you wanna have a focus to help people in some sort of way and make people come first, regardless mm -hmm. if that's your customer, if it's your employee, if that's somebody that you're talking to, you're the least thing that's most important in this world. It's about the other people. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna change the world, uh, and if you really wanna do something significant in business, you have to make the main focus your people. Yep. Um, and it's not about the money. It's like, there's no dollar signs in here. There's no payment in between me and Steve. I, I don't get paid to do this. He doesn't get paid to do this. We're doing this to help you guys. Um, we're doing this to inspire you and tell you that it's possible. Um, you can continue to watch another interview after interview and looking for that magic nugget, or you could just focus on actually going and getting off your ass and actually doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody's going to tell you to, to go do it by yourself, especially in this business. It's not a job. No. So <laughs> <laughs> sales is not, it, it, you have to be self-motivated. Yeah. So get off your ass, get off Facebook and get back to work. Yeah. Like that's the only way you're going to strive to do better. Right. That's I it. love it. And that's the reason why we have this show, right? Yeah. Cause I mean, we're all doing big things, mm -hmm. but I want everyone to know we're also people. Yeah, for sure. Right. We screw up. Yeah. You know, we're, we're flawed individuals, Yeah. but we're still doing big things. Absolutely. So we can do it. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do this. Yeah. I love that message. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, uh, so that's up. That's it for the show. Um, I just want to share again with you guys. If you guys need help getting ARV or closing your deals in Phoenix, please reach out to me. Um, and if you want a copy of our script or our assignment contract, uh, you'll have to go to real estate disruptors.com opt in, and then we'll email you what we're using. And then we do have Tiffany Burns here next week. So definitely tune in for that. Uh, and if you guys haven't signed up for we live, definitely do that. I'll be out in Dallas next month and maybe we'll pop by your office check out what the operations looking like That'd dude yeah cool. come come through man yeah um yeah just if you're in dallas just let me know oh i'm definitely gonna do that um so that's it uh, if they want if the people want to reach out to you how would they do that yeah so um instagram probably works best i think i might be capped out i don't i don't know but uh, i think instagram you don't get capped out no on facebook, facebook. yeah facebook, well yeah. facebook there's a limit to i don't like limits do you like yeah. limits i don't like limits no, so i'm not a fan of facebook but you can add me on facebook obviously i'm tagged on this on this interview or you mm -hmm. can add me on uh, uh facebook or I'm, I'm sorry instagram uh the donovan ruffin um i'm private and uh, i like to brief people before i accept them i don't like bots and i don't like mm -hmm. fake followers so if you're gonna follow me um make sure that you're uh, paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you. That was, yeah, for that sure, was incredible. Man.